Hi all, so today we'll be covering value added tax, which we all know about and which we all know that we pay, but we're just going to go through it in according to the VAT Act. So how I'm going to do or how I will be presenting it, I'll start off by those by going through all the study notes again. And the study notes are essentially a summary of your Silk South African Income Tax Book. It's a very, these study notes are very um, thought, f thorough and they cover all of the work and um, yeah, it's worthwhile going through this and studying um, these notes. Okay, and then what I'll also do is I'll cover all the work covered in your tech, in your study guide, study unit two, and then we'll do some questions. Okay, so let's start. So what is VAT and how does it work? So VAT it is an indirect indirect tax, meaning that it's taxed on something else. It's not on a person. It's taxed on your usage and it's actually a consumer tax that so a consumer ultimately pays. So important to note is VAT indirect tax. It's tax on something else. Now, how does it work? So it's based on the subtractive or credit input method. So basically what that means is your VAT payable, or in some cases your VAT receivable, is a VAT collected on your um, turnover or sales or your output VAT, less, the, less you, um, VAT on any business expenses. So less your input VAT. So it allows the vendor to deduct the tax incurred your, on your expenses from the tax collected on sales on the supplies made by the enterprise. So, um, yeah, so as I mentioned, your VAT output is on your turnover or sales, and the VAT, the vendor charges VAT on goods and services supplied by him, whereas your input VAT is the vendor, um, it's, the, it's the VAT the vendor has incurred in relation to goods and services supplied to him. Okay, you may claim that back. Okay, and then your output VAT, on what do you charge VAT? So, firstly, you've got your taxable supplies. These are the normal VAT items um, which you get every day and which you see on every receipt that you, uh, or most receipts that you get from any big shop or, su or such. Then you've got exempt supplies. That's according to Section 12 of the VAT Act, and it has a whole list of items which are exempt from um, carrying any VAT. Then there are zero-rated VAT items, which is according to Section 11. And these are essentially your basic food groups, fuel, and um, yeah, they, they, there's a whole list which we'll go through a bit later. But these are items that are taxable or does have a VAT rate, but in this case, 0% VAT rate. Okay. So before going into the details, we need to first define what is a vendor. So a vendor is, is defined as a person registered or required to register for ACT. Now a person, as I've mentioned before, it includes any, any, um, anything, whether a natural person or a business person or entity. So it can be your public authority, local authority, so your municipality, a company, close corporation, partnerships, um, married, in community of property, deceased and insolvent estate, trust funds. So a, a vendor is any person registered or required to register. Now, when are you required to register? So firstly, you are required or um, to register when your taxable supplies is more than a million rand, either during the previous or the prior 12-month period, um, on the last day of that 12-month period. So if you look back and your taxable supplies within a 12-month period was more than a million rand, then you are required, according to the VAT Act, to register as a VAT vendor. Or if during the next 12-month period, you um, 
anticipate that your taxable supplies will be more than a million rand, then again, you are required to register as a VAT vendor. Okay, so this is more, so that's for example, if you have a big contract in place where you know in the next 12 months you will have a taxable supplies more than a million rand. Okay, so in the beginning of the month, when you know that um, your taxable supply will be more than a million rand, that's when you need to register as a VAT vendor. Okay, now you may also voluntarily register as a VAT vendor. So that is when your taxable supplies is more than 50,000 rand, but less than a million rand So during a 12-month period. Now, the VAT Act doesn't specifically define a, 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 a year, so it doesn't specifically say it or define a tax year or a financial year. It just means that any consecutive 12-month period. Okay. So importantly, the million rand or in the voluntary, um, if you need to, if you want to voluntary register that uh, money or that taxable supplies, it excludes VAT. So it's your million rand excluding VAT. So only from a million rand, that's when you need to include VAT. So a person, if a person carries on separate businesses, so jointly his separate business together, um, their taxable supplies, if it's more than a million rand, then he is required to register. And very importantly, the onus is on the person to register. It's not on SARS to come to you and tell you, hey, we see that your taxable supplies is more than a million rand. The onus is on you to register, and you have to register within 21 days by going to the SARS website or any SARS bronze closest to you and filling in the VAT 101 form. Okay. If you don't register and SARS catches you out, then there are major penalties involved. Okay. So if you have a business or an entity and it has different branches, then um, this entity or this sole trader, he may register separately if these different branches, they are at different locations and also have different um, activities, as well as, and very importantly, these um, branches must have independent accounting records. So then this, um, this entity or the sole trader may register separately. So each branch, when each branch um, has a taxable supply of a million rand or more, then that branch needs to register for VAT as a VAT vendor. Okay. So if you look at separate persons deemed to be a single person, so if you've got two companies carrying on the same enterprise, SARS is satisfied that the main reason or one of the main reasons for a split is to avoid registration, then it's deemed to be the same person, so then your tax or supplies, so if your tax or supplies is more than a million rand, then you are obliged to register. Okay, so that just that just means that um, SARS needs to look into um, your company and um, to see whether it is whether you're carrying on the same enterprise or doing the same activities. Okay. You know, tax period says you can go through by yourself, but um, yeah, it's just when you need to um, pay your taxes, your VAT, and all of that. Okay, so when may you claim input VAT? So remember, um, you are required to register as a VAT vendor when your taxable supplies is more than a million rand, but you can also voluntarily register as a tax vendor um, if your taxable supplies is more than 50,000 rand. Now, why would people want to do that? And that is mostly because they feel that they can claim a lot of input VAT. So that's why they would want to do that. So you may only claim input VAT if there is a valid tax invoice. So if you have any expenses from, from a different entity or business expenses and that entity is not a registered VAT vendor, then you may not claim back any VAT because ultimately what it means is that the enterprise B from which you buy your expenses from, they need to pay output VAT on the sales 
So if they are not registered, then they can't pay any output VAT. So then it's not something that you may claim back. So that's why um, it is important that you may only claim VAT input ta VAT from if they from an entity if it is a registered VAT vendor. Okay. But there is one exception, and that's the acquisition of secondhand goods from a non-vendor. So it's a notional input. Okay. So valid VAT invoice. So we just look at what should what sh information should you have on an tax invoice. So if your supplies is less than fifty thousand rand, then your tax invoice is optional. The supplier must issue within twenty one days if the purchaser requires. So that's just yeah, you knew you know what that means. It just means yes, if your taxable supply is less than fifty thousand rand, you don't even have to register as a VAT vendor. If your taxable supplies is between um sorry sorry, let's go back um one step and say when your supply is less than fifty rand, it's not fifty thousand. So it's just less than fifty thousand rand, then the tax invoice is optional. But you have to register. You have to issue this tax invoice within 21 days if the purchaser requires it. Okay. If the taxable supply is between 50 rand and 5,000, then on the tax invoice it should include the name, the address, the VAT registration number of supplies, the date, serial number, um, description of goods, indicate whether it's secondhand or services supplied. The the value of supply plus amount of tax charge plus consideration of supply so that's the full amount so that's your um, or it's the amount ex excluding VAT or the consideration and statement that the VAT is, in is included at 14% or the amount of VAT. Okay and if the taxable supply is more than 5,000 Rand then all the information mentioned there in um, number two plus then your name, address, plus VAT registration number of the recipient. Okay. So the quantity and the volume to goods as well. So the counting basis, there are two different types of counting basis, being your invoice basis and your payment basis. Your invoice basis basically means that you'll account for VAT on the earliest of an invoice or a payment. So whenever you receive an invoice or whenever you made a payment, that is when you need to, um, that's the date on which you um, need to account for VAT. So very important, any supply of 100,000 Rand or more it needs to use the invoice basis. The payment basis, that's mostly for small businesses and you account for VAT on payment if the association, if there's an association not for gain or public authority or natural person and um, the taxable supplies is less than two, two and a half million rand during the previous 12 months. Okay, so that's just, that's the payment basis is more for small businesses. Okay, so the <clears throat> time value of supply, that just basically determines when, when you should, um, account for VAT. So, so the time value of supply, that is the earliest of the time when the invoice is issued or the time the payment of consideration is received by the supplier. So that's just when you account for VAT or when you may claim back any VAT is the earliest of the time on the invoice or when the payment was made. Value of supply, if the consideration is a form of money, the menu, oh, sorry, the money, that is the value of the supply, or if the consideration is not money, it's the market value at the time of supply, less your VAT. Okay. And then just the admin procedure, procedure is not really important. So, um, no, you can go through this on your own. You just need to complete your VAT 201 form plus the payment to SARS on or before the 25th day of the, of the month. Um, if you want to manually submit it, or end of the month if you want to do e-filing or submit via e-filing. <clears throat> so if there's a late, late penalty, this is important. Well, um, yeah, it's important for you to know as an enterprise owner or as a business owner, there's a penalty 
of 10% of the tax due. So it's very important for you to pay your VAT or, um, on time by the end of the month. Otherwise, whatever you were supposed to pay over, output VAT you were supposed to pay over to SARS, you would incur a 10% penalty on that. And there's also interest um, involved. Okay, so VAT is levied. Um, I'm going to go through this a bit later, but according to Section 71A, VAT is levied on the supply of goods and services by a vendor in the course or further, furtherance, furtherance of an enterprise. So the supply, now this includes your sale, rental agreement, installment, plus any other forms of supply, whether voluntary or, consult or compulsory, irrespective of where, of where the supply is effect. Goods, um, this is your corporal, movable things, fixed property, any real right, electricity. So it's the supply of goods. Um, importantly, it excludes money, which includes bills of exchange, postal orders, the RAND value under a mortgage bond, and revenue stamps. So it is the supply, so any form of supply of goods, any goods, except um, anything on exempt list, or service, and, and or all services. Now, services is anything done or to be done. It includes granting, session, or surrender of a right, making available a facility or advantage. If something is not a supply of goods and not specifically exempt, it will be a supply of services. Now, this also includes um, your patents, goodwill, trademarks, know-how payments, anything like that. Okay. So, it's a supply of any goods and services which... Um, it does have tax VAT implications on it. Now, vendor, a vendor is anyone who is registered or required to register for VAT. So, in the course or furtherance of an enterprise, an enterprise is any activity or enterprise carried on in South Africa or partially in South Africa on a regular or continuous basis by any person in the course or furtherance of which goods and services are supplied for con for a consideration, whether or not for profit. Okay, so enterprise is essentially any um, entity or any business, or it can also be a natural person. Okay, and then there are some specific inclusions, so anything in connection with commencement or termination of an enterprise, activities of welfare organization, foreign funded projects, usually um, no consideration. Um, now just note your consideration. That is the full selling amount, which includes VAT. Okay, so there are specific exclusions. So activities to, to extinct and involve the making of exempt items. So any exempt items um, that is excluded from the VAT Act, we'll go through it a bit later. Hobbies of natural persons. Hobbies is, does not relate to business expenses or does not relate to income generation for an entity, so that's why it's not included as in the VAT Act. The services by the employee for remuneration, you may not charge VAT on a salary. Supplies made outside of South Africa by any branch or main business, provided that the branch is permanently located at premises outside South Africa, specifically identified, and it has an independent accounting system. So that just means that um, any supplies or any yeah any supplies made outside of the republic, they it is specific, specifically excluded from the VAT Act. Um, you may not charge VAT on it because it does have other the other countries VAT implications, possible implications. So that's why. And in the supply of commercial accommodation, where the taxable services in a period of a 12 month would not exceed 60,000 rand. Okay, commercial accommodation is mostly your hotels or anything like that. 
So the local authorities' special rules will be deemed to carry on an enterprise where the following are supplied. So electricity, water, gas, environmental levy, um, levies, drainage, sewage, and garbage services. So that's basically government or your municipalities. They should also charge VAT on um, what they supply to you. So on the water and electricity and all items like that. Okay. Now the importation of goods. So VAT will be raised on importation, whether a, whether a vendor or not. So non-customs union member country. So that's basically um, when we do not have a customs agreement with a country, then how you calculate or how you should charge VAT on it is the custom duties value, value so the value which relates to custom duties, plus 10% of the custom duties value, plus the custom duties, custom duty. Okay, multiply by 14%. That's um, the VAT that should be charged. Okay, so it's the supply which you import, plus then an extra 10% on that supply, plus then the specific custom duty tax, according to the Tax Act or um, levy. And then multiply by 14%. Okay, so that's just saying that we don't really want, well, we prefer to not have as much importation. We'd rather want to export, so that's an incentive to um, export and um, to basically charge more for imports. Okay, so if it's a custom union member country, so if we do have a agreement with a country, um, then it's just your custom duty value multiplied by 14%. So it's just the value of the supply and um, added with added 14% tax. Okay, so, so um, in bond supply of goods, goods imported but stored at, a cus at customs warehouse, not yet declared for use in South Africa. So the value is the greatest of the um, custom duty value plus that 10% or the consideration for in bond supply multiplied by 15%. Okay, so that you just need to go through by, by yourself, but for this course, it's not really relevant as yet. Okay, and importation of services. So a supply of services by a supplier who is a non-resident, carries on a business outside of South Africa, to a recipient who is a resident of South Africa, to the extent that the services are used in the South Africa for the purposes of making non-taxable supplies, there that is a supply of services, um, well, uh, importation of services. So you need to take note of that definition. So the VAT is payable by the recipient of imported services imported by a non-vendor or a vendor for purposes other than making taxable supplies to the extent that it is used in a republic. So the value of the supply is again the greatest between the consideration of supply or the open market value of supply. Okay, so that's just the value in which you need to charge the VAT on. Okay, and then admin forms, you can go through this on your own, but it's just VAT 201, oh, 215, um, and then you also need to include a VAT 201 return. So that's when you um, charge, well, that's when you levy all your VAT during the year, after during the month, and you pay it over to SARS and you declare to SARS and um, at the end of the month. So import services, which does not um, have any VAT implications. So that's a supply which was already subject to VAT. It's something which would be exempt or zero-rated services if they had been supplied from gear. Educational services provided by foreign institutions to South African students. Rendering of services by employees to his employer. Um, foreign director falls outside the... Okay, so it's just your services by employee to his employer and the supply where the invoice is less than 100 rand. From the 10th... Yeah, okay, so you can go through that. Okay, so zero-rated supplies, remember, these are supplies which 
has VAT implications, but at a 0% rate. Okay, we're going to go through that a bit more in detail um, a bit later, So, but this is just an overview. So we've got exported goods, so according to Section 111AI and I2, and, um, or I2, so we've got direct export, so goods exported are regarded as direct exports and would therefore qualify as a zero rated supply of movable goods um, consigned, delivered in export country and any doc documentary proof is set out in an interpretation note 50. Um, yeah, so this exportation and importation, this is something you go th can go through by yourself. It's not really relevant um, for this course, so just read through this and just understand this and have it as background knowledge. But yeah, you can go through this by yourself. Okay, and then exempt supplies. Which are your exempt supplies? That's um, financial services according to section 12A. Again, we're going to go through exempt supplies a bit later in more detail. So this is just a quick overview. So your financial services, they, these are exempt. So that's any currency transfer of ownership in a share or membership interest, a debt security, um, a check or a letter of credit. So yeah, any financial services. This does not include all fee-based financial services. The underwriting issue of a share, consideration payable, um, rental ag agreement payments, that's very important, um, merchant discounts, so all of that. So the zero rating of financial services when performed outside of South Africa or in or a non-resident, not physically in South Africa, takes um, precedence over the exemption. Okay, so that just means that if you render any financial services outside the country or if financial services is rendered by someone who is not a South African resident, then um, there's an exemption. Okay, donated goods, that's also exempt. A residential ac accommodation, according to Section 12C, that's exempt. So the supply of a dwelling under agreement for the letting or hiring thereof is exempt. Um, dwelling, that's just place to live. Um, it's used as a predominantly as a residence, but it excludes the supply of commercial accommodation. So, in other words, any hotel or any um, factory or anything like that, that is an exclusion and that does have that implications. Because remember, if you are a hotel owner and you rent out your hotel rooms, then obviously you need to, it's your income or your essentially the service that you render and on that it does have VAT implications so it's just logical okay and as as I said it excludes commercial accommodation so the lodging together with domestic goods and services um, supplied at an all exclusive charge so in other words if you sort of supply a room at a specific charge um, which is subject to change then it falls under commercial accommodation. Um, yeah, and if you <clears throat> rent out this hotel for a period more than 28 days, then it tracks VAT on 60% of the value of the supply. So that's a note that you should um, that you should take note of. That's something that you should take note of. That if there is a commercial accommodation and um, the supply or the services rendered with this commercial accommodation is more than 21, 28 days, then only on 60% of the taxable supplies which you receive, they, on that you can um, charge VAT. You may add VAT to. Okay, yeah, that you could, the rest you can go through on your own. So that's just a quick overview on the VAT. So if we look at, 
So the next part to look at is theme supplies. So that's just in order to avoid any confusion whether you have a transaction and you don't know whether it's a supply or whether a transaction is deemed to be a supply of goods or services or not. Then it's a deemed provision as contained in Section 8 and 18.3 of the VAT Act. So Section 8 also deems certain transactions to be a supply, although it might not meet the requirements of the definition. So these are just um, supplies which it doesn't specifically confirm to the co conform to the definition. So there's just specific inclusions which, um, yeah, which is a supply and which does have VAT implications on it. So the most important one to note is a fringe ben or certain fringe benefit. So what is a fringe benefit? That's basically a um, that's basically a so these are basically certain privilege, privileges or benefits which an employee receives from his employer or um, or which what, what the employer has. And that's basically, for example, a cell phone, uh, which is used for business purposes, a vehicle, also again, used for business purposes. So yeah, these are specifically defined as supply. Now, fringe benefit is set out in, in the seventh schedule of the Income Tax Act, and that is something we'll do a bit later in this course. So the output tax can be accounted for by the employer if the intention is to reverse that portion of input tax that was previously claimed on those goods and services by a vendor. Okay, so um, the fringe benefit is subject to VAT. If any assistant is given three or at low rate to employer, services made available to the employee and the rand in use an asset given to an employer use of a company cost. So that's basically any fringe benefit. Um, so it's any benefit that you receive from your employer. So the value of supply. So what is um, the amount that you should charge or that you may claim that on? So other than a company car, it's a cash equivalent of the fringe benefit. Multiply by 14, divide by 114%. So it's basically the inclusive amount, and then you just take that out of that. If you receive a company car, then this needs to be calculated monthly. So if it's a motor vehicle, then it's 0.3% of um, the vehicle, delivery vehicle. Multiply by 14, divide by 114%. So any other vehicle, if it's then it will be 0.6% multiplied by the, the delivery vehicle and then the 14% on that. Okay, if the delivery vehicle excludes VAT and financial charges, then you may reduce it by 15%. So yeah, you just need to determine whether it's a this, this delivery vehicle or this company car is a motor vehicle, so a normal car, then um, the VAT on that is 0.3%. And if it's any other vehicle, so if it's a truck or bucky or anything like that, then it's 0.6%. Okay, and then you can also subtract the cost pay paid by the employee. So the employee bears all maintenance costs at um, 85 rand per month, the employer, employee pays anything to the employer for use so the input was claimed on the vehicle. So essentially what it means that is that any um, expenses which the employee incurs during the use of this fringe benefit, he may subtract the cost of it. Okay, apart from fuel, because fuel is a zero rated item so there's no or there's a zero percent VAT on that and again interest that's a financial charge so it's a, an exemption so you need to know the list of your exemption exempt items your zero rated items and all of that ok 
Okay, indemnity payment. So that's another fringe benefit. So if a vendor if a vendor's stock is stolen and he receives cash from an insurance company, he is in the same position as he would have been had he sold the stock, SARS wants capital on that disposal. So the vendor pays the premiums under a short-term insurance policy, so the vendor can claim input tax on the premiums if the premiums was paid in the course or furtherance of the enterprise. So essentially what it means is on insurance, business-related insurance, you may claim um, VAT on that input VAT. Okay. So cease being a vendor. So um, any food. So other than those that were input VAT was denied. So um, yeah, you can go through this on your own. Doesn't really say much, but you just the main one you need to know is the fringe benefit. That's something that you might get. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. So the, ne the next thing is just to know that the VAT is payable in terms of um, Section 7 on the supply of goods and service and the importation of goods by a vendor. And it's the lesser of the consideration, so the actual selling price or the actual value of the item or the current market value. And very important is that there has to be a valid tax invoice to claim input VAT. So you are allowed to claim input VAT um, deduction if the vendor paid VAT on the acquisition or the notional input VAT on acquired second-hand goods. So also you need to be in the possession of a, val a valid tax invoice. And you need to determine the purpose for which the goods and services were um, used. So 100% um, taxable, tax, taxable supplies, then claim 100% input. If about 90% of this um, value is taxable supplies, then you may also claim 100% input. If it's less than 95%, then just a portion which um, relates to taxable supplies on that you may claim input VAT. Okay, so this is very important. Um, you need to go through this. Okay, so on what may you not claim input VAT on any in entertainment? So whether it's like you take up any clients for business, a business lunch or anything like that, um, any food that you provide, um, yeah, that is exempt, or that, that is, um, you, you may not claim any VAT on that. So there is an exception, and that is when the vendor is in a business of supply and entertainment, so that's your normal sell, so that's your income. So on that you are exempt, so in that they, it does have VAT implications. Okay, so club subscriptions, that's also another item on which you may not claim any VAT or which... Um, does not have any VAT implications. So, um, yeah, the membership fees of professional bodies not within in the AMBIT, so, um, yeah, you can go through it on your own. So, motor vehicle, the motor car input VAT is denied. The definition of a motor car, motor vehicle is a station wagon, minibus, double cab, light delivery vehicle, and any other motor vehicle normally used on public roads. It has to have three or more wheels and constructed or converted wholly or mainly for the carriage of passengers. So that's the important thing is if it's used for the carriage of passengers. So the exclusions can only carry one person or if it ca can carry more than 16 persons. Yeah, you can go through this on your own. Um, but these are just items which you may not claim any VAT. Okay, so the notional input VAT, so it's acquired on secondhand goods from a non-vendor if this vendor is a resident of the Republic. So the goods um, should be situated in the Republic, so in the country. So also the goods are being wholly or partially used for the making of taxable supplies. 
Then the sec second hand goods um, has you may claim input tax on it on either the cost or the market value, uh, whichever is less. Okay. And then, yeah, you can go through this documentation, which is re required, um, but it's your normal, just normal stuff which you do know. That's what we went through earlier when we went through the documentation. So now let's look in a bit more detail on exempt items. This is according to Section 12 of the VAT Act. So exempt items are financial services. So that's any interest earned, life insurance, exchange of currency, transfer of ownership of a share. Um, so services of a um, benefit fund. So in other words, a pension fund, a retirement annuity, medical aid. So any financial services, these are exempt from any VAT. But it does not include or um, which is does not confirm to the definition of a financial services is, is all fee-based financial services, the underwriting issue of a share or a membership interest, um, rental agreement payments, that's an important one, and merchant discount. So if you get a discount because uh, you paid um, you paid your your supplies on time, or you pay you ordered in bulk, so that's where you got a discount. So any discounts essentially, and then also the supply of a checkbook that is um, not exempt. So any donated goods and services sold by non-profit bodies. So that's for example religion, religious and welfare organisations. So it has to be a non-profit organization and a donation to a non-profit that is exempt residential accommodation that is also exempt so this does ex so yeah any residential accommodation that is a specific exemption but it excludes the supply of commercial accommodation so for example a hotel so the exemption still applies to employers who supply accommodation to employees where the employee is entitled to occupy the accommodation as a benefit of his employment, or the employer operates a hostel or boarding establishment mainly for the employees, not for profit. Um, so yeah, that's also that's a specific exemption. But this excludes co commercial accommodation, so it's the lodging together of the domestic goods and services supplied for and all-inclusive charge by enterprise supply and commercial accommodation. Very importantly, for an unbroken period of more than 28 days. So if it's more than 28 days, then it, tra it tracks VAT on 60% of the value of supply. Okay, so if it's less than 28 days, then, then nothing really. More than 28 days, you need to, um, it, yeah, you need to track VAT or account for VAT on 60% of the value of supply. Okay, and um, this also ex excludes a letting of a lease hold land to be used for a purpose of erecting a dwelling, the sale or letting of a land situated outside of the, outside of the Republic. Very importantly, a transport of um, fair pay and passengers and the personal effects by road and rail. Educational services, that, that's also an exemption or exempt item. Membership contributions to employee organizations, child care services by creche or after school care center. Um, yeah, anything like that. These are all specific exemptions. So go through this list, understand this list, learn this, study this list because you'll get questions or well, you'll get items in a question which you need to specifically know it is an exemption. And um, yeah. Next thing to go through is your zero rated supplies. So these are supplies which confirms, conforms to the definition of um, items which attracts fat. However, these at SARS or um, National Treasury, they went and they exempted these items and said that these items are basic um, items which should not attract any VAT. So the most important one is your basic food items. So that's your brown bread, um, samp, 
your dried mealies, dried beans. So it's basically your um, fruit and vegetables, all of those. These, uh, these um, does not have any vat on them. Okay, and then you've also got a few levy goods. So any fuel that is a zero rated item, go in concern. So the pot, very important. So when you um, sell a business, there has to be a written agreement that the income earned and activities at the time of transfer, the all, all the assets necessary for carrying on the enterprise are disposed of at the time of a contract agreed to the consideration is included of a VAT at 0%. So just the only thing to note there is there has to be a written agreement. Okay, any farming goods, so these are your animal feed, animal um, remedies, fertilizer, these are also zero rated items. International transportation, so if you travel to a destination outside of the Republic, then that's a zero rated item because it has other um, VAT implications of the different country the country to which you travel to, there it has some, well, yeah, there's some airport taxes and all of that which applies to that. So that's why it's zero rated item. Okay, and then um, services rendered outside of, the, outside of the Republic. So it has to be physically outside of the Republic. Um, these are also zero rated. Okay, and then also services rendered to a non-resident. So it's only 0% if it's rendered directly to a non-resident at the time of a services rendered. And then you've got your direct export of goods. So in certain instances, the indirect export of goods may also qualify for the zero rate. In both cases, certain documentation and other requirements must be met to support the application of the zero rate. And then finally, the supply of gold coins, so your Kruger Rands issued by the Reserve Bank, these are also zero rated items. So again, this is a list which you need to know and you need to study and understand. So finally, we have got our standard rated items, which is currently at 14%, but as at um, April 2018, it will be 15%, so it's the first time in more than 20 years where the government had, has increased VAT. Um, but yeah, so these are basically all other items which are not exempt or which is not a zero rated item. So it's your land and buildings, commercial or residential property bought from property develop developers, the building materials, vacant land bought from a vendor, etc. So fees for professional services, so your accountants, lawyers, um, any fees you pay to them, it has a VAT, you need to account for VAT, your household consumables, so most grocery items which are not your basic food items, so the chocolate that you like so much on that is VAT at 14%, your water and electricity, um, any municipal goods and services provided by the municipality, your accommodation, hospitality, tourism, and entertainment, so that's your restaurant meals, hotel accommodation, your favorite bottle of wine, um, casino slot machines, all of those has normal VAT implications on that. And then the importation of goods that we went through earlier, but you need to determine whether it's the importation is from a non-customs union member country or whether it's from a custom union member um, country. Okay, and then the importation of services. So the VAT is payable by the recipient, given that it's a non-vendor or the vendor for purposes other than making taxable services, to the extent that it's used in the Republic. So finally, if we just, just summarize taxable supplies, what is it? VAT has to be levied on the supply by any vendor of goods and services in the course um, enterprise in the, in the course in which the enterprise carried on. So what is the supply? So it's a wide definition and includes sales, rental um, agreement, installment, credit agreement, or other forms of supply, whether it's voluntary or compo compulsory, irrespective of where the supply is 
effect. Okay, and a vendor. So as a vendor, you are required to register as a VAT vendor if your tax will supply more than a million rand in a 12-month period. Um, but you are also allowed to voluntarily register as a tax vendor if your taxable supplies is between 50,000 and a million rand. How do you register? You just fill in that form 101 um, at any source branch nearest to you. And um, yeah, if you have separate businesses, then jointly when the tax taxable services of these separate businesses is more than a million rand then jointly you well then you need to register but if you have an enterprise or a company which have different branches given that they have separate identities and different locations and they have independent accounting records then when each of these branches reaches the million rand tax or supplies then that specific branch needs to um, register as a vendor tax vendor okay and then um, any goods and services so that's your corporal removal things fixed property any real rights electricity it excludes money um, the brand value on the mortgage bond and revenue stamps it also includes the supply of trademarks patents goodwill, know-how payments, anything like that. Then, of course, of enterprise, so any activity or enterprise carried on in the Republic or partially in South Africa on a regular or continuous basis by any person in the course or furtherance of which the goods and services are supplied for consideration and whether it is for or not for profit. Okay, so this is just a quick summary. But very important is for you to go through all these notes read it, understand it, and you need to be able to apply this knowledge to any question that you might get. So you need to know what are your exempt items, you need to know what are your zero-rated items, and you need to know, for example, when a entity should register as a VAT vendor, and all of that. So please go through all of this and please study this. Okay. Okay, so I'm now just going to briefly go through what is covered in your study guide. Um, I have already covered everything which is in your study guide in the notes, but um, for your purposes and when you study, you need to go through the study notes, you need to go through your Silk textbook and um, take specific focus on the items or sections covered in your study guide. So just looking at study unit 2, which is value added tax, but before, what we'll be learning or what we'll be covering is the definition of an enterprise, the registration requirements, supplies, deemed supplies, non-supplies, input VAT and output VAT. See, I made a spelling area yeah. um, the calculation of VAT payable or receivable and the due date thereof and an in-depth understanding of the treatment of VAT in accounting records Okay, so the value added tax is an indirect tax, meaning that's a tax on um, an item. It's not on a specific, on a direct tax on a specific person. So it's levied on a supply of goods in terms of the VAT Act 89 of 1991. Originally, VAT was charged at 10 percent, was increased to 14 percent in 2000 in 1993, and now. For the first time in more than 20 years, it was increased to 15% in 20, 2018. So yeah, the first time in 25 years. So what is a vendor? A vendor is any person who, who is or required to register under the VAT Act. Now a person is a public, can be a public authority, a municipality, a company, closed corporation, body of persons, deceased or insolvent estate, trust fund or any foreign donor project. 
Okay, when should you register? So whenever your taxable supplies exceeds a million rand, then you are required to register as a VAT vendor. Um, either when your taxable supplies within the preceding 12 months exceeds the million rand um, threshold, so at the month end when it um, when it's more than a million rand, that's when you register, or when you expect that the next 12 months your taxable supplies would be more than a million rand, then you need to register on the beginning, on the beginning of the month when you have this expectation. So for example, if you have any contracts in place or any agreements in place where you specifically know you will receive more than a million rand, okay, then you need to register. Now you may also voluntarily register as a tax vendor if your tax of supplies is more than 50,000 rand or less than a million rand. And why would you do that? And that's mostly just because you want to claim some VAT input um, and if you feel it's beneficial to your company. So very importantly to note is that within the VAT Act, it doesn't specifically um, reference any tax or financial year. It looks at any consecutive 12 month period. Okay, and your million rand in refers to your taxable supplies and it excludes any exempt items. And this million rand also excludes VAT, so you can't include the 14% or in this case, or in the, yeah, from 2018 or 2019 tax year, um, 15%. You, could, you may not include that. So exclusions. In a determination of turnover. So we did go through this in detail. So that's just when you have, for example, a joint business, then when the taxable services of your joint businesses exceeds a million rand, then you need to register as a tax vendor. But if you have a entity which has different branches, given that these different branches um, are within separate locations and they're completely independent of each other and they've got independent accounting records then when each specific branch reaches the million rent threshold then that specific branch has to register as a tax vendor a VAT vendor sorry okay so that's just that so if we just look at an example so Mrs. Zulu, she carries on three different ent enterprises that only makes taxable supplies. All three enterprises are carried on her own name. So Enterprise 1 has a turnover of 360,000, Enterprise 2 a turnover of 320,000, and 3 a turnover of 340,000 Rand for the 12 months. This excludes VAT. So in total, during this 12-month period, her Three enterprises had a turnover of 1,020,000. Okay, now you are required to determine whether Ms. Zulu must register for VAT purposes if the above information applies to the 12 month ending 31 December 2014. So remember, if you have um, different en enterprises or different entities and it's not different branches, which are independent from each other, then jointly, when your different enterprises together reaches the million rand threshold, then you are required to register as a VAT vendor. So in this case, Mrs. Zulu, she has to register as a VAT vendor because um, the taxable supplies together of these three enterprises exceeds million rand, the million rand threshold. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty simple. Um, you might get that something similar like this in a test or an exam. Okay, when do you register? So, um, Yeah, if your business activity is split between two persons, so if you want to avoid the million rand threshold, then the onus is on the commissioner to, to determine 
Um, whether you are deemed to be a single person carrying on one enterprise, then only when the commission is satisfied that there's a split of activity to avoid registration requirements, then the commissioner may make the decision that, yes, um, it is a single entity, so yes, you must register as a VAT vendor. Okay, if we look at example 2.2, Paul is a plumber and carries on a business as a sole trader. His turnover for the past 12 months, ending 31 December 2014, amounted to 550,000 Rand. He is also a sole member of a closed corporation called Paul's Plumbing Services with a turnover of 580,000 Rand for the past 12 months. So, from the above, well, from what we just went through, is Paul. Like, well, should Paul register at, for that purposes? Now, um, in this regard, the commissioner of SARS should make the decision. Uh, but, um, yeah, we'll make the decision that Paul will have to register as a vendor since the combined value of the taxable supplies is more than a million rand. So that's in terms of Section 50A. So when re registering as a tax vendor, the onus is on you as the person to register within 21 days after you are liable. How do you do it? You just complete VAT 101 form from SARS. You need to include all supporting documentation. And um, yeah, very importantly is you, it has to be within 21 days. If not, then there are big penalties involved. And also if you are a group of companies um, then, and you cannot register as a vendor, then each, each a sub subsidiary must register separately. Okay. So just the base, basics of input VAT. So remember your tax or VAT payable or refundable is your output VAT minus your input VAT. Now the input VAT is basically payments for goods and services purchased by the vendor for the purpose of making tax or supplies. So that's your expenses. And how do you claim? You have to have your supporting transactions or your supporting documentation, which is your tax invoices. And um, yeah, so if a vendor uses goods and services wholly in a cause of making tax or supplies, he's entitled to claim the full amount incurred when acquiring goods and services. If the vendor uses the goods and services wholly in a cause of exempt taxable supplies, is not entitled to claim any input VAT because these items are specifically exempt. So also if the vendor is partially in uses goods and services partially in the cause of making taxable supplies, then the tax deductible to so taxable use is, if it's 95% or more, then he may claim the full input tax. If it's less than 95%, then he may claim the portion input tax relating to the taxable supplies. So just quickly in summary, what this says is um, when you have any expenses and the, these expenses are used 100% in the course of making your taxable supplies, then you may claim the full input tax on that. But there are certain exempt items, um, exempt taxable supplies. So if this expense is part of the exempt items or exempt supplies, then you may not claim any input tax. Now also, if you have these expenses and um, you only use these expenses partially in the course of making taxable supplies, then your tax deductible is if it's more than 95%, the full amount. If it's less than 95%, only the portion um, of that amount. So, for example, if you have a machine to manufacture, um, I don't know, books, and 90% um, of, the, of the books that the, let's say 60% of the books that this machine manufactures or prints um, is for business purposes, then you can only then you should use the six and sixty percent portion, which will be liable for VAT purposes. 
Okay. So um, there are certain items on which you may not claim input tax. These are your entertainment, so it's a meal to staff, clients and business associates, club memberships, and motor, motor vehicles. So this excludes any buckies. Now just quickly looking at an example. So we've got Sample CC owes, owns a three-story building. The ground floor and first floor accommodates various businesses, while the second floor is comprised of flats rented out to as residential units. SARS has agreed to an appropriate appropriate uh, sorry apportionment set at 80%. The following information has been provided to you. So you've got commercial rental received 240,000 Rand, your residential rental received 60,000 Rand and then the cost or the expenses is insurance on the building um, 6,500 Rand, advertising for commercial business units 7,850 and electricity 22,000 Rand. So calculate the VAT payable by sample CC. So if you look at that what is our output tax? So what is the VAT on our income? Remember that with residential rental received, that is an exempt item, which we went through earlier. You may only claim VAT on commercial accommodation. So we look at the com commercial rental received. It was 240,000 Rand. That's your consideration. And on that, um, sorry, that, that's the value of supply. And on that, it has a 14% VAT, so it's then 33,600. Okay, and then insurance and water and electricity. So if you look at this building, it's divided into a residential and commercial. The commercial activities accounts for 80% of the income, so that means for insurance and income, or for insurance and water and electricity, you need to take the cost, you need to use the portion which relates to the commercial rental, so that's 80%, and on that you need to multiply 14%. So then for insurance, the input tax, which you may, may claim back, is 728 Rand, and water and electricity is in 2,562. Okay, and then advertising is just normal advertising because it is on your commercial business units. So that's then just at 14% gives you 1,099. So in other words, your VAT payable will then be 33,600 minus... 728 plus then your advertising of 1099 plus water and electricity of 2562. So that payable is then 29,000. 214. Okay, so yeah, that was that. It's quite simple. You just need to know um, what it relates to. Now, looking at the other side of the equation, you've got your output VAT. So, your output VAT is basically on your sales or your income. So, output VAT is a VAT charge by a vendor for the supply of goods or services by him. The, vend the vendor needs to pay over to SARS the VAT levied on each transaction and levied on business transaction in respect of taxable supplies. And it also includes the sale of capital assets and trading stock. Now your taxable supplies is either at your standard rate, 14%, or zero rated items at 0%. And there's also a list of exempt supplies, which on which you may not claim any output um, VAT. OK, 
Okay, so let's have a look at these items. So your zero rated items, these are vendor sell, um, sales exempt supplies, not permitted to charge or to charge any output VAT. So these zero rated supplies are financial services, accommodation, only residential accommodation is exempt. Commercial accommodation is not is a taxable supply. But with regards to commercial accommodation, if it is rented more than 28 days, then the VAT portion is only on 60% of the consideration. If it's less than 28 days, then it's 14%, a total 14% VAT, normal 14%. And then also transport services is also zero rated supplies. So passenger transport in South Africa by train, bus or train. Okay. Then your exempt supplies, so this is a list of, list of supplies which is specifically exempt in terms of the VAT Act. So um, these are export, direct export, so goods delivered to an export country, sale of a going concern, and certain basic food stuff and levy and fuel. This should actually be at the zero rated items. Sorry, I'll change that. Okay, now your but for your zero rated items and your exempt items, just go through that list in the study notes because the, the that's much more broader and it defines as much better than your study guide. Your study guide for me is a bit vague, so focus on those study notes. Okay, and then your accounting basis, it's two types of accounting basis: your invoice basis and your um, payment basis. Invoice basis must account for the full amount of VAT included in the price of goods and services applied. So it applies to the output tax liable, or cash or credit sales, and input tax deductible. So basically what this means is it is mostly related to big businesses or big companies, close corporations. And whenever... So these entities, they should have an invoice and um, the VAT payable will then be the earliest date of whether the, of when this invoice is issued or whether the payment is received by a supplier. So you need to determine that. You will get that in a question. Okay, and then the advantages and disadvantages you can go through by yourself. It's, yeah, just read that and understand that. Look at the payment basis. This is mostly intended to help small businesses and um, your only the vendor only accounts for that on actual payment made and actual payments received. Okay, and then the time of supply. Time of supply is basically when um, VAT is liable. So VAT is liable on the earliest date between the date of the invoice or the date of the payment of the consideration is received by the supplier. To calculate the value of supply, so firstly, the value of supply is a selling price, excluding VAT, which is um, you just multiply it by your tax fraction, so multiply by 14%. Or if you have the consideration, which is the selling price, inclusive of the VAT amount, then you need to multiply this consideration by tax fraction of 14 divided by 114. So just important to note is in a question what you have. If you have the value of supply, so the selling price excluding of the VAT, then to get the tax um, portion is multiplied by 14 divided by 100. Or if you have the consideration, that's the, that is the selling price inclusive of VAT, you just multiply that amount by 14 divided by 114. So if you look at example 2.4 in your study guide, so you've got a vendor registered on a payment basis supplied the following goods. On February the 2nd, goods are delivered at a client's premises and the invoice for 15,000 Rand for the goods was issued on the same date. The payment of the goods was received on 31 March. So let me just change that. Hmm. 
I'll change that later. So let's just do each one of these separately. So what is required from us? We are required to determine the time of the above supplies of, for that purposes. So we look at that number A. So according to this example, the value of supply is lower than 100,000 Rand and the time of supply is the date of the payment received. So that is 31 March. So remember, there are two conditions. Either it should, the value of supply should be less than 100,000 Rand. If so, then the value, the time of supply is the lesser between the invoice date or the payment date. In this case, the date is the payment is received, and that was on the 31st of March. Okay. We look at the second one. It says that on the 29th of April, the client paid 50,000 rand for goods delivered on the same date. The invoice for the goods was issued on the 14th of May. So here we've got a payment which was made before the invoice was issued and this taxable supplies is less than 100,000 Rand. So in other words, what we'll use as our date will then be um, this 29th of April because the value of supply is less than 100,000 Rand and the time of supply is then the date when the payment is received and that is on the 29th of April. Okay, and then finally we've got on the 19th of July, trading stock is delivered at a client's premises and the invoice for 180,000 Rand was issued on the same date. Payment for the goods was only received on the 31st of August. So just quickly going back one step, you need to determine whether it is an invoice basis or payment basis accounting system or basis. Now the payment basis, that's mostly for small businesses and that's for payments less than 100,000 Rand. So on that, it is only the payment date which you use. But if the taxable supplies is more than 100,000 Rand, it will then be the invoice basis. And there you need to determine whether it is the earliest date between the invoice received or payment made. So in this last um, example, we've got our taxable supplies being more than 100,000 Rand. So in other words, it will be the invoice basis. And um, yeah, we've got this invoice. The invoice was on the 19th of July, but the payment was only made on the 31st of August. So remember, the value of supply, the value of supply is the lesser between the payment date and the invoice um, date. So in this example, it will then be the 19th of July because that's when the invoice was issued. It's before the payment date. That's the earliest date. Okay. So finally, how to calculate your VAT payable or VAT refundable. First thing to calculate your output tax. Then you need to calculate your input tax. And then you need to, to determine whether there are any VAT adjustments to be made. And then, yeah, your, you need to use, you need to subtract your input from your output tax. And if your output tax exceeds your input tax, then you need to pay that. You've got a tax payable, but if your input tax is more than your output tax, then you will get a refund from SARS. So in summary, your VAT is levied by vendors on all taxable supplies. In input tax must be claimed against your output tax on supplies. You need to distinguish between your standard rate supplies, your zero rate supplies, and exempt supplies. And you also need to distinguish between the invoice basis and the payment basis and the time of supply. Okay, so essentially in summary, go through those study notes because those study notes is a summary of everything in your SOC book. And then you need to apply those study notes to the work in your study guide, so to this um, study unit, to this presentation. And um, you need to be able to apply that knowledge to questions. Okay, so talking about questions, we're going to go through question one in study unit two now. Okay, so let's look at question one in 
study unit 2, so that is on page 23. So we've got sample CC. Is a benjen filling station with a shop on the premises. The following information was supplied to you with a two-month tax period ending 31 March 2015. Sample CC is registered on the invoice basis for VAT purposes under category A, so that means that um, the payment date should be the lesser or the um, VAT date or the VAT implications will be on the lesser between the payment date or the invoice date. So you'll need to determine that. And also, yeah, they tell you that um, all amounts include VAT at 14% where applicable. So you've got your income expenses for this two months. If we look at our income items, we've got total sales, fuel, and sales for the shop. Remember that fuel is a zero-rated item, so there is tax on it, but at a 0% rate. So in other words, there's no tax on that. So it is essentially an exemption. But you've got our shop, and the shop, in the shop, all items within the shop at, was um, at a standard rate applicable to it. So we'll need to get 14% out of that. Now this is the selling price, this is 364,800. So from that, we need to take this portion includes the VAT already. So remember, when you need to calculate the VAT, you need to multiply it by 14, divide by 114. Because remember, the formula is what you have, or sorry, what you want, divide by what you have. And in this case, you have the amount inclusive of VAT. You only want VAT. So that's why we're going to say for this shop, the sales in a shop, going to say 364,800 multiplied by 14 divided by 114. The fuel sales that's zero rated so that's no that's zero there's no fat payable on that. Okay so let's look at the rest. So our put our expenses so we had purchases fuel of 1.5 million and then again we've got expenses Open the shop and all these have are applicable to your standard rate 262,000 Rand. So again, your fuel expenses, that's a zero rated item, so there's no VAT on, on that, but on the shop it, it is 14%. So your input tax, that's your tax on your expenses. So fuel zero shop is again just 262. 1,200 multiplied by 14 divided by 114 because this 262,000 Rand already includes VAT. Okay, so next thing is bank charges at 6,880. Bank charges includes the following items for the two months. We had a checkbook, internet banking fees, and an interest charge on overdraft. Your, if you Recall from your exempt items, any financial services is an exempt item. So under interest paid, that is exempt. So there's no VAT on that. But there is VAT on your checkbook and on your internet banking fees. So if you add those together, um, you get then 268 Rand. <clears throat> and that already includes... VAT, so that's why we're going to multiply it by 14, divide by 114. Okay, and then we've got a computer, 1,600 Rand, and that says Mr. Naidu, the owner of the filling station, purchased a second-hand laptop for use in the business from a non-vendor. So it's a second-hand purchase. The purchase price for the computer was 1,600 Rand, and the market value is 1,780 Rand. So the purchase price was paid in full. So on this computer, it's a DIM input VAT 
because it's a fringe benefit. And remember when we went through that, there's specific um, items deemed or deemed VAT items. And in this case, we gonna use the less lesser amount between the cost of the the cost price of this computer and the market value. So in this case, we're just gonna use a thousand six hundred rand, and on that we're gonna multiply fourteen divided by one hundred fourteen. So the input tax that we may claim back is one hundred and ninety six uh, one hundred and ninety six rand. Okay, and then there's depreciation load three. So depreciation is charged on a single cab bucky owned by Sample CC and which is used by the manager. The single cab bucky was purchased on 2012 for 393,000 Rand, including VAT of 49,000 Rand. The manager has the sole, had the sole use of the single cab bucky for the entire tax period. So depreciation, that is not a supply. That is essentially a non-financial item. So it's not anything that you actually pay. So that's why there's no tax on that. But remember when we went through our deemed items, we had um, any, any motor vehicle or company car, which is a fringe, a fringe benefit, given that it should be a bucky or a single cab bucky, that is, sorry, let me start over. So according to the deemed um, items, we had certain fringe benefits which on which um, we should claim or pay VAT on that. And those are, most commonly it will be a company vehicle, company car, and if it's a normal motor vehicle, then you um, it had s certain ways of calculated calculating it, and it, or in this case, any other vehicle, we need to take the value, multiply by 0.6 percent, multiply by 14, divide by 114, and then in this case, we're also going to multiply by two months. So if it was a motor vehicle, then the 0 0.6 would be 0 0.3. So that's just an important thing for you to remember. And why is it 350,000 Rand? Because if we look at the cost price here, we've got um, the purchase price is 399,000 Rand. But this includes VAT of 49,000 Rand. So we want the amount without the VAT. So that's why we're going to um, subtract that 49,000 Rand. So it's 350,000 Rand multiplied by 0 0.6 multiplied by 14 divided by 114. Um, so that then gives you then. Total fringe benefit of 560,000 on the single cab bucky. Okay. Then finally, we've got our lease payment, note number four. So Sample CC leases a photocopy machine from Mashua Nobel. The financial lease agreement was entered into on the 1st of March 2015. So that's on the current month, the photocopy machine cost 25,536, excluding financial charges, and the monthly installments for the next 36 months are 1,050 Rand. Okay, so on our um, photocopy, um, what do you call it? lease, we need to take the cost of it, the total expense, which is the 25,000 Rand, multiply then um, 14 divided by 114, so that then gives you 3,136 Rand input tax, which you may claim back. But then we also have our office equipment rentals, so that's this 
note number five. So office equipment rentals for the two month period was for the printer, 1,482 and a coffee machine, 1,026. So remember coffee machine, that's an entertainment item. So that's why you may not claim any input VAT or any VAT on that. But the printer that is used for business purposes. So on that, we may claim VAT. Okay, so that's then just the 1,000. 482 multiplied by 14 divided by 114. So we may claim 182 rand VAT input. Coffee machine is, as I said, entertainment, so no VAT implications, or no VAT payable on that. Okay, and then tea and coffee, that's also entertainment, so there's no VAT on that. And finally, our travel expenses, note number six, 18,605. So let's have a look at note number six. It says travel expenses are made up of 822, 821 rand for hotel accommodation and meals incurred by the manager of, for, of Sample CC during an out of town business trip to Cape Town to undergo training in respect of a new software package. This travel expenses also includes um, an air ticket which was purchased from SAA to Australia for 17,784. So remember that this 822 Rand, it relates to commercial accommodation, your hotel accommodation. So on that, it is, they are that payable. But this air ticket is for overseas, it's, it's not in the Republic. So on that, there will be no VAT on that. So our travel expenses, 822 Rand, multiply by 14, divide by 114, gives you a VAT payable of 101 Rand. If they told you in this example that um, you stayed in a hotel for more than 28 days, then you would have multiplied this 821 Rand by 60%, and then um, calculate the VAT portion on that. So if you do that calculation, then you would only have been able to claim 60 Rand and 49 cents, that input. Okay, and then finally the overseas air ticket is a zero rated item because it's overseas, it has um, other tax implications on that. That's why they made it a zero rated item. So we're not gonna do anything on that. And if we look at the final item or final expense was wages, 25,415. That's also not, a, it's not a supply. So um, there's no VAT payable on that. So VAT payable is then 45,316, which is our output tax, less our input tax. So we need to pay back 9,468 Rand to SARS during these, after these two months. Okay, so yeah, go through this work, focus on the study notes, go through your study guide, and also go through the questions. Okay, and then make sure that you also read through your silk book because that is your most important resource. Okay, so that's it for that. The question two will be done at a later stage. Um, yeah.